This is an example of a DC mesh solutions problem at level three. We're going to click on DC mesh solutions. And of course, we always have examples available here at different levels of difficulty. So I'm going to click on a hard or level three problem. So we have the instructions here. If we need those, we can review that. Now in this type of problem, we're being given the KVL equation for the super mesh in this case. Um, so we don't need to find that, but we do need to find the current constraint equation for each of the two current sources, the 3 amp and 7 amp. And we will also need to find the sought variable equations for the voltage V0 across the 2 ohm resistor and then the power dissipated in that same resistor. So let's do that. First do the current constraint equations. So for the 3 amp source, we see that there are two mesh currents going through that, I3 and I2. So we will need a difference of mesh currents equals to the fixed value of that current source, which is 3 amps, since it's an independent source. Now I3 we see is going clockwise and therefore down through the 3 amp source. So that will have a coefficient of 1 and a positive sign. Whereas I2 is going clockwise here, meaning it's going up through the 3 amp source, opposite to the direction of that, and so it will be the one with the negative sign. So it's going to be I3 minus I2 is 3 amps. So that's correct. And now we will do a corresponding thing for the 7 amp source. So again, it has two mesh currents through it. So we will again need a difference of mesh currents equals to the fixed value of that source, which would be the 7 amps. And this time, I1 is going down through that source since it's flowing clockwise. And I2 is going up through the 7 amp source, so that's the one with the negative sign. And so we have the polarity correct, so we check that. And that's correct. And now we need a SOT variable equation, first for the branch voltage V0. So we will choose SOT branch voltage. And we have V0 equal to and now we see that there's only one mesh current flowing through the 2 ohm resistor, so we will need just this type of term with one mesh current. So we put um, I3, 3 rather, and then the value of the resistor is 2 ohms, and we'll check that. And okay, I did that too soon because I forgot to check the uh, sign convention. So let's look at that more carefully. We see that I3 is flowing clockwise and going into the negative side of V0, and therefore that is the active sign convention. So our Ohm's law here should have a negative sign. So we see that we need a negative sign there, and now we'll check that, and that will now be correct. Now we have to write a SOT branch power equation. And as usual, there are several palettes of terms we can use if we need them to write SOT powers. But we're just going to use this one for now. So we have the dissipated power in the 2 ohm resistor is equal to a single mesh current going through that resistor. So we're going to use the I squared R formula with a single mesh current. And that will just be I3 squared, since that's the current going through that resistor, times the 2 ohm. So we'll check that equation. And that is correct. So now we have all of the required equations to describe the circuit. So we'll click No More Equations. And now we have to do the new part for a solution game, which is that we have to basically put these equations into a standardized form so that we can solve them. And we're going to rewrite them just first in a standard form. It may not be necessary for this simple system, but we're just going to do this um, as it is required. Um, we do not use the SOT variable equation. In this case, we're just writing the first three equations, which are the current constraint and KVL equations. So the first equation says I1 minus I2 is 7 amps. So the I1 will have a coefficient of 1. I2 will have a coefficient of negative 1. And then we have 7 amps on the right-hand side. And of course, there's no I3 in that term, in that equation. Uh, the second equation says I3 minus I2 is 3. So I3 here we'll have a coefficient of 1, I2 will have a coefficient of negative 1, and then that will be equal to the 3 amps, the fixed constant. We don't put any units, um, as usual, in these text boxes. Then for the third equation, which is the KVL equation, 
um, it's a very simple form. So we have I1 times 1, and we have I3 times 2. There is no I2 term here. And the plus 1 volt from the voltage source, that gets subtracted to put it on the right-hand side to make the standard form. So then we'll have subtraction from both sides. That will give us a negative 1 here. So now we check these equations. And those are correct. And they've been printed on the screen now. And our next task is to form those into a matrix equation in case you wanted to use matrix techniques to solve the problem. This problem, that's probably not necessary, but we will still do it um, in case you wanted to do that. So all we have to do here is to click the button that says copy from the simplified equations. And now we can verify that these, in fact, make sense because, for example, the first equation just says 1 times i1 minus 1 times i2 plus 0 i3 is equal to 7. So that's the first equation here. The second one would just be 0 times i1 minus 1 times i2 plus 1 times i3 is equal to 3, and so forth. So these are the correct equations. And now we will need to solve this. Um, we could use Gaussian elimination on this system. That wouldn't be too bad here, given the simple form. Um, but probably an easier way when we have just a single KVL equation and a couple of concurrent constraint equations is to simply substitute these into this equation eliminating um, all but one variable in this equation, and it only has two to begin with, um, and then just solve by elementary methods. It's probably easier than going through the, the whole uh, process of doing a Gaussian elimination. Now your instructor might want you to turn in a written version of your work, so if so, um, then be sure to keep that. And it's always a good idea to have a record of your work anyway for future study. Okay, so now we're going to do the algebra that's required here. And this is fairly simple. So I'm just going to write the first KVL equation in simplified form, which says um, basically I1 plus I2, I3 rather, is equal to negative 1. And then I've also written the two constraint equations over here. I1 minus I2 is equal to 7, and I3 minus I2 is equal to 3. So this one just has I1 and I3, and obviously we want to eliminate one of those variables. And in fact, what we're really after is I3. That's what's needed in the SOT variables. So let's eliminate I1. Um, well, actually, I didn't do it that way, but in any case, it, it doesn't matter. So let's just uh, combine these two equations. Um, we want to get rid of the I2 so that we can relate I1 to I3. Um, and so instead of solving uh, each of these and substituting them in here, it's simpler to just subtract these two equations, and that will give us I1 minus I3, and then the I2 terms will cancel out, is equal to 7 minus 3 or 4. And solving that then for I3 is I1 minus 4. We could have solved it probably for um, I1 instead, but it, it's not really going to matter very much here. So now we have I1 plus 2I3, and we replace I3 by I1 minus 4, and that's equal to the negative 1. Then collecting terms here, we have I1 plus 2I1 is just 3I1, and then here we have a negative 8, which we add 8, therefore, to both sides, and adding 8 to negative 1 will give us 7. And then we just divide by 3, so I1 then will be equal to 2 and a third, or 2.333. And we carry out four decimal places there just to make sure that we don't have round-off problems. Um, I2 then, uh, using this formula, we can easily see that I2 is I1 minus 7. And then just putting in I1 um, and subtracting 7 from it, that will give us negative uh, 4 and 2 thirds or negative 4.667 amperes. And finally, I3, we can use this equation to get I3 then. Um, or we could use this one, either, either one will work. But let's just use this one. And so we have I3 here is equal to 3 plus I2, which I've written here. And then we just put in the value of I2, add 3 to that, and that's going to be negative 1.667. So now we're ready to enter those three values into the form. So I1 is 2.333. I2 is negative 4.667. And I3 is negative 1.667. And we check those values. 
and those are correct. And now we just need to evaluate the stock quantities. So now we use our SOT variable equations here, and we have that value of I3 that we entered, the negative 1.667. So we just multiply uh, the negative of that, so basically um, 5 thirds times 2, and that will give us a value of 3.333. And then for the second value, we just take I3 and square that and multiply it by 2. And if you do that on a calculator, you will get approximately 5.556. So we enter those two values here, and now we check those, and those are correct. And finally, we do have an option to view the detailed explanation of the derivation of the KVL equation. So if you want to do that, you can just click yes there. And that shows you a picture of the super mesh, which basically in this case combines all three meshes. Um, since this mesh is linked to this by a current source, and then this one is linked to this, they basically f form all three of those meshes, uh, other than, of course, the outer mesh, uh, form into one. And then that's the origin of that equation. So that completes the problem.